Um, this is my 12th conference, uh, and 11 times I've been able to uh, speak. And uh, my little evolution is I've had a few years doing similar things to, to John Howell and trying to explain the Fed. And, and I had a banker or two I was talking to. And, <laughs> and, um, and then um, I got to play Jeremy Bentham and argue out uh, the uh, utilitarian philosophy from the late 1700s. He's the one who started, uh, helped started our prison system too in this country, by the way. And then, oh, the next big thing I really enjoyed was I shared a movie, What Would Ben Say? And it was my fifth grade students at the end of the year where where they have a conversation with Ben Franklin. You remember Ben, he's holding on to the kite and the key and electricity and it's raining, it's all wet and electricity hits the wire and it comes on down the string and it knocks him out and it knocked him back to the future. And he woke up in 2014 dressed in costume and he was then talking to Howie historian, Bob Banker and Miguel Friendly in my friend and then we went for a ride on the south side, and um, we went over potholes and empty homes. And, and Ben Franklin, there was this long 25-minute conversation between these knowledgeable students and Ben. And so as an educator, I'm going to talk education, and then I want us to talk or get into a conversation about what we can do to help educate. Um, uh, just a few comments. And similar to John Howell and Nick Tiedemann, this is sort of like each year it's like a continuation a little bit and um, of, of, of things past and, and, and some new things too. Um, um, I'm thinking of Elizabeth and what is that strong background and where, where I get pushed from the AMI perspective, and I've done this work um, as you may know, I've been pushing with the Chicago Teachers Union, and they were the first to endorse. I set up a study group with the Teachers Union where we would meet and actually study the NEED Act. And before uh, Dennis ran, or was being gerrymandered out of his office, um, the Teachers Union did an endorsement, and, uh, and I even tried to do some work with teachers in Cleveland and Toledo, and then later, I've done some work out in San Francisco and then with the NEA, National Education Association, and AFT, American Federation of Teachers. But the problem I've always had historically is that Monday morning come and I had to get back in the classroom. And uh, in the last few years of teaching, I was teaching, I've taught K-12, I've taught college too, but I, I was teaching K-5 science education I had six classes every day, 30 kids in the class, and I had to take science into their classrooms. And it was a, th uh, a um, three levels to the building, so it was a lot of hoofing and caring and uh, a lot of push. And so now I'm retired, so I have more time, but I still need to work taking an early retirement. So instead of starting Monday morning, I start maybe around Wednesday morning but that gives me Monday and Tuesday to work on monetary reform. And uh, I tr do try to make some use of that time, which I hope to share with you now. Um, but so my evolution, too, in approaching and also thinking about our conversation this morning is that while I've done that, like that political work, we've got, I'm stepping back, too, and I'm de sort of deciding I have to go in a little bit of a newer direction or a new approach. I have to. And so following up with Elizabeth, go into your deep background, your history, so to speak. And I used to, I lived um, over 10 years in Alaska. And I got to work with different native communities up there. I was an anthropologist. And, and I was, got the job to write the third and seventh grade heritage curriculum. So that, and I would travel in areas as big as Iowa up there. It's only a small part of Alaska, though. But I got to 53 different classrooms, and I'd work with third and seventh 
kids. I would work on the littoral zone or the, the area around the coastline. Uh, how did the interior people make it? And then we would work with the classrooms where they would put on plays and they would do their history, so to speak. It was a lot of fun. And I got to work with high school kids. They would have a Eskimo Indians Olympics of their own sports. And, and uh, so I, I wrote a, a book on that and just gave it away to the school districts. And I use it even to this day to do their Indian uh, Eskimo Indian Olympics. And I would sm talk about small details of, of how to do a seal hop and culturally would change when you got to a certain territory. They'd be hopping rather on their knuckles or on their fingers, you know, little differences in style. And, uh, but they, they came up and there was a lot of fun. So now I want to think of how do we make it fun? How do we apply this to money today? And rather than do the political work, I want to go back and do more of that curriculum development work. As Greg mentioned early on, we need 51% coming up with what? Wartman, right? What you were saying was that Onsgeld it's got to be 51% say what's happening to our money and they've really got, they've got to be pushing their politicians and Greg mentioned we have to have three and a half percent maybe really knowledgeable who can really push in a stronger way three and a half percent of our population is over 10 million people so that's that's still a big number of people and how do we get to them and so my approach as an educator is I want to develop curriculum and pass it on to other teachers and work with them. And I can take breaks from my Wednesday through Thursday job. And what I want to do that is to go to classrooms. And I have relationships with some Quaker high schools and uh, uh, some Steiner high schools, some um, a few different uh, alternative high schools. It's hard to get into public school systems. But you can get, so I'm looking for, and, and, and I could use your help with this, but I'm also looking for people to, to be a part of this. So if you're interested in anything I'm saying, please talk to me. And I'll have a website, uh, a different website. I'm going to, an educational website I want to get on to um, is, is to push towards uh, these reforms in a way that gets us kids opening up and asking questions and and gets into the monetary conversation. And the person who I love using as a model, and I think and plan this actually, is Nick Tiedemann. If you notice, every year he comes, and he's like tinkering with the monetary system. And it's like, he's like a young kid playing with his toys, and he's going to divine something up. And wow, think of this. You know, and, I, and curiosity. And I want kids, I want to blow curiosity into a big flame. And I want kids to be curious about their monetary sense. What, can we, what about what if? You know, and so when I go around and I talk to um, reform, reform money, And you've got to put it right into the address, www.reform.money. And I, it's to get the kids so that they're empowered. I don't want to, I want to be the, I don't want to be, no sage on the stage, but I want to be the facilitator on the side where the students are engaging. And this is, this is a bit different. Thank you, Jamie. I can, this is a bit different than how we're doing it now because you've got to, you have to create a bigger umbrella because the students are going to take you right out of the box. You know, there's an AMI box, and once they start using their imaginations, they're gone. And, and I've done this with 7th and 8th graders, and I have asked them to write. I've given them STEM questions where they go on and thinking, um, and, they're, and they're gone. And I even ask adults, common people, and they're gone. You know, like I'll give you one that comes to mind is, is some gentleman who has a gambling problem, and his family would walk around with him watching him that he wouldn't get into a casino. And... And, he, and I talked to him about money, and he said, we should have two kinds of money. We should have Social Security money, and we should have wild money. And he wanted some right to use his wild money to go into the casino with. And we could think about it, but kids are going to be thinking about everything. And the kids come with a natural concern about everybody. It's, it's in the play, it's, I see it in the playground from four years old on up, and 
where they may want to be rich, but they also say in the next breath they want everyone to be able to go to the hospital or see it, go to the doctor. They're very concerned about the community and their neighbors. And, um, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Wartman here says, you know, what are we going to do if only a European could really ask this question? We can't even ask this in the United States. What happens if they don't really want to work that much or they don't really want a job? What are we going to do with them with their basic necessities? You know, in, in Americans, we'd have, they'd walk the gangplank there, you know, but, but um, you know, and I've responded once before. We have Parker Palmer who says there's two thoughts. He, he, and, and as a teacher, and I work with kids, I want all my kids to succeed. I want all my kids to have jobs when they grow up. I want there to be a place in their community. I want their parents to be able to be models for them in their community. I want them to grow up with security. And you want these things for your kids. And you want, I want my kids to be able to walk home in, in safety. I've had kids that have died walking home from school. So I, I've seen both sides on, on, around Chicago. So, you know, so I'm idealistic. And so Parker Palmer says, he gives us two thoughts on thinking about some of this. And one thought is, if you're in touch with your natural, your true natural gift or gifts, you'll know that you're in touch with those natural gifts because if you give it away, you don't need anything in return. So that's one thinking. Yes, you need something for your life. But my question would be back to you is, what is that person's natural gift and can we work with them to bring something out where they can share something? Even during the 30s and the recession in the US, we had artists going around. We had you know, some wonderful things, art, artists and art projects around the country. There's different ways. And as we've talked earlier, we, we're getting to robots and, we, we're, and, and mechanisms that we may have more leisure time available but also we have great need in education and welfare and other things where we need the employment. We need many more teachers, many more people in the classroom. Kids are starving f for an adult listening to them. And how can we create that connection? We're dying because of that. We're li as a culture, as a society, we need many more parents and people working with kids. You know, to get through, the, when I started in 74, I it was teacher, two aides, 26 or 27 kids. And I've, I've had to figure out my pension. I had to prove that I was teaching in the system. They lost my records. So I went back to my pictures of being in the classroom with the kids and found some social security. But now, when I retired, six classrooms, 30 kids, no aid, kindergarten. They're speaking their grandmother's Spanish that they just came from. And my Spanish isn't quite that good, you know, but it's OK. But I would end up hiring parents at 15 bucks a class or giving them GED lessons where I'd stay after school and help them with their GED classes. And that's what I had to do to make the system work. And what we needed is more of those parents in the community helping them with their education and helping them help their kids. Helping them you know, maybe cook some Mexican food and maybe serve family style instead of a lunch that looks like very much like if you saw Where to Invade Next and Michael Moore's thing and he, he puts out that American lunch in front of the French children. We, I saw that lunch. I've seen that lunch many times. I, it, sometimes it's unrecognizable. I can't figure out what's in that, you know? <laughs> I swear, it's not even that. It's getting closer to what you saw in the Matrix when they were eating. <laughs> and I'm wondering, wow, and, you know, what the French kids were thinking about that food. So we need to do a lot more. And if some don't fit in or some fit in, I think we can do a lot more to find them or to get them to fit in or, or to, be, to be in a healthy situation where we don't have to have so many prisons, where there are jobs and, and there's growth. There's a whole, um, I can really appreciate that movie uh, for, that, for that reason. Um, so 10 million people, let's go. So I'm interested in creating curriculum, in sort of for the general pro public, but my aim in education is go down to 
sixth, seventh, and eighth grade where the teacher is really excited about the curriculum. If there is a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teacher really excited about the curriculum, they can teach what we're learning here. And there, there's ways to do it. When you get, you could do it fifth, fifth grade and under, but it's a little different situation. And right now I'm working on this website for sixth grade to eighth grade where there's a great teacher, a really special teacher. Then at the high school level, it's even still more departmentalized and then we can go into, you know, pro, you know, even at the middle school, there's, it's what's called problem-based learning. You take the ill-structured problem from the real world, from your newspapers, and you present them to the students. Well, we've got, we're loaded with ill-structured problems that need solving, and you give them to the kids to solve, and you've got to learn to set up the problem and do it. So you can, we know how to do this. And um, so, I'm also thinking of college students and the general public in this, and I haven't had a lot of time. I, I, I have a, another teacher friend who's a website developer. I go to his house when I can at nights. I'm there until 10 o'clock on a school night, and he'll be, you know, we've got this on Facebook. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel. We've got um, a Twitter account, you know, <laughs> he's getting all the social media and he's pushing me to get a lot of um, video up there. And um, so let me, let me go in here and just give you a tiny bit of what's going on. This is the home and, oh good. So this is just a little introduction, and there's two types of introduction. One is an introduction to the website, and one is an introduction um, to the coursework. And um, so, and, and this, this still is all in development. So let's go to education. If I get it up here, oh good. So here's, aha, it's coming up. So here's course one. And, you know, there's a little few different words. There's course one. Um, and so they just hit course one and it goes into like 46 pages of writing. And so the teachers can assign whatever they want from it or the public can just read about it. And it covers the money creation problem. I'll get into, well, it covers how money is created through the Fed either by giving a bank loan or by buy or making purchases. So it can loan money or make purchases by, and create money. That's how the Fed does it. And then I have, for how banks create money, I have three observers. Observers A, observers B, observers C. A say money is money. You know, they're the, the uh, those who say the monetary base, it's what the, it's what the Fed creates as money. That's all, all the money that is. The banks may create credit, but that doesn't count as money. And there are people who think banks are only intermediaries, and they're only thinking they don't believe even in the money multiplier. You can get into some of those conversations, and it's a perspective. Observers B are your money multiplier people that you heard this morning, and they believe in that fractional ratio banking. And from an accounting perspective, I look at that as uh, you got to look back at your excess reserve, look at your excess reserves, and based on that, you can loan 90% of your excess reserves, and that creates new money in the system, up to around, in actuality, around three to four times the level money is in, in real practice, sometimes a little less. Then there's observer C, C, and I call them these really smart people, <laughs> or smart, smart group. Uh, where, where banks create money. And not only, and they do what we, instead of looking at excess reserves backwards, they sort of do forward accounting. They say, hey, when we make the loan, we can think of those as being reserves being made at the same time. And uh, as someone said this morning, if we all work in concert a little bit, we can make loans and we'll be creating the reserves at the same time and we can uh, we can grow the ca uh, economy and we can develop our lo loan portfolio or our investment portfolio as we wish. I, and later in here, one of the bigger problems I put in or challenges is Iceland. 
Iceland did a 100-page paper in figuring out that question. Was it the money multiplier that got us in trouble, or was it banks, or worse, banks creating money? And they ended up in the early 2000s where they agreed it was after liberalization of deregulation in the early 90s. By the early 2000s, at least, the banks were just creating money in Iceland. And, uh, and if you saw Michael Moore's movie, they were sent to the hinterlands of Iceland, which, which is pretty hinter to begin with. But you know, they had to go way, way up north. <laughs> Maybe they got to Greenland, who knows, but yeah. Um, so there, so it's to have fun with it. And um, so course one, and it's a PDF, I, you know, how to work with it, I'm not sure exactly, but it's, it's 49. Course two is gonna be history early, from the American colonial period coming forward, when we had the question of how you create money, can it be zero inflation, which Jim was pointing out, or do you want 2%, 1%, as Mark was pointing out, being good. There's wonderful examples, right from the colonial period, but going through, of course, I'm thinking of Pennsylvania, um, and how they could get a very low inflation system, lowest that we've ever had in our nation from 1723 to 1776, in that 52-year period, and what did they have to do? And since they were doing it so fresh, they were creating paper money. You know, they, they said, we can do it with paper money and not go, not go to gold or silver, that we can do some very special things. So cor course two is this history, greenbacks, post-greenbacks, a lot of fun stuff there. And it's more for students, and it's kicking it up a notch. Course three goes into, into pre-biblical history, ancient Greek, lots of fun stuff back there. You know, and, and, you know, and what Coates was talking about in terms of uh, the religious perspective on money. And so, and when I think when you get back to that, you know, instead of young kids growing up, you, we can, you know, I, I can dream about Illinois and myself locally and kids and my students getting jobs, but I, when I dream big, or we dream big, we can think about kids saying, oh, well, I don't need to go to ISIS. I got a cool job over here. I've got some things I can do to help my community in, in Syria, Afghanistan, or Norway, or New York, or Chicago, <laughs> South Side, you know, that we, 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 can, we, can, we can create these connections and, and make those green connections with Mother Earth, those, the ways that we're going out of balance, what can we do when we can create money to put us in balance? Students will be dreaming and thinking about this too, and it's to present them with, with the problems. I want to go to one more area. And This isn't my computer, and it works backwards for me. But this is um, my, creating money and going green, you know, and, and just having the world being a little more green. Government can create the money to give everyone a job who wants work, and that's not inflationary. How? And so there is, you know, a little blog on that. Let's do another one, the last. An earlier blog, Venezuela, how can we help you? You know, and it shows you know the strike lines and whatnot. But there's some blogs. You know, as I think someone brought up the question of Venezuela and hyperinflation. What can we do there? And so you know, we can have a dialogue on it, and and you know, these can be questions. The one little last one I like to leave you with, but is a, is just a thought problem, and then and, and give you an invitation, and I'll wrap it up. Is um, I went to Positive Money, and Ben Dyson goes over to Denmark. Where's Ollie? And uh, and he gives him a thought problem. The thought problem is we're all on a ship. There's a thousand of us, and we're in the South Seas, and it's really beautiful. And and Virginia's leading us with some meditation and stress relief. <laughs> but but then in the middle of the night, oh my gosh, we it we hit a we get grounded and, and then there is a leak and we got to get off the off the ship and but there's an island very close and we're, we got a shipwreck we all get to the island we're making it 
everybody just naturally helps out and because there's the lack of communication we're stranded so we're helping each other out and then people in the beginning just help out get the firewood and, and but then we're stranded for quite a while and we got to think about how we're going to get along and there's three groups three people or three different small groups go into some thinking about oh well we can create these tokens we'll make these leather tokens and we can use them as money and um, and they sort of come up with an idea since we're making them we'll We'll, we'll loan them out and people can pay them back, but people can do goods and services with us and we can have a little economy. Another group comes back and says, well, we can make the tokens and just give them out there, you know, which would be social credit theory, if you're familiar. And so they come up with a few diff different ideas. And what Ben Dyson says, let's think about it. Well, how do you want to create money? And he says, we haven't had in England that conversation since the 1840s. And, but he's, he's inviting them and saying, how are we going to do it? And so I'm going to be inviting students into thinking about what are we going to do and how are we going to grow curriculum. And, and if we can get some teachers, that's the way I would like to be working with teachers, is getting them to work with their students so we can get to the 10 million. And that, that would be the, the goal. And this site is open for if you want to be an author on this site if you want to be a website developer or you want to write a blog or if anybody wants to be a committee i can work a bit as an individual but i love teams i'm a team person and um, i'm happy to share this site and we can work towards the 10 million <laughs> right afterwards right after we hear dennis tonight or something tomorrow at the beach. We can start planning our, our who's doing what. <laughs> we'll do some strategic planning. But thank you very much. And any questions? It's actually money can be an ending. So I've got two website or two names that'll get you to the same place. It's www.reform.money. Money is an ending. So reform not reform.money.com, forget the .com. It's reform.money, and that's clean enough. The other ending, or the other name is, I got monetary edu, standing for education. So monetaryedu.com. So it can be that way too right now. And you know what? This is my project that I started over the summer. My first blog was Venezuela, you know, July 1 or something. So it's, this is a subsite that has really no traffic because it's, it's, it's in development form. And uh, I just got the course one up there, you know, maybe a month ago. But I'm looking for teachers, and I'm happy to go anywhere in the United States or anywhere, period, for, uh, anywhere in the world. If there's a serious teacher working with their students, I'll go and work with them. I'll, I'll play with those students to come up with thinking and thoughts. Last year, who are, who are aware of the monetary system, they need to reform it, and are teaching that dimension. Have you met not, not into the same way. We last year we had somebody from Montreal who's there, but he had to do a research project, so he was like in and out. But this type of thinking full time, no. The, around Chicago, there's a group called Teachers for Social Justice, and I'm going to have a booth, and I'll I'll make this teachers and, and those there are union teachers that are ready to take on the fight and so I've, I'll work on st another study group with these teachers get them going and I'll, I'll try to support them in their classrooms can you say more about the study group yeah well the first study group is the way that Karen Lewis and core there's a Jackson Carter J uh, Jesse Sharkey they created the leadership at the Chicago Teachers Union, and um, and they studied all of the issues. And they were it was teachers only, teacher thinking, teacher budget was focused on teacher. Karen Lewis threw that all out, and so we got to be very community oriented. But that came from thinking and studying, looking at data, look and trying to figure out 
how, and dreaming about how to go forward in a better way. And so I joined that group and, and I said I wanted to bring up the monetary issue. And they said, form a study group. So I formed a study group. We would meet at pubs or, or little restaurants, cafes, and we would talk monetary reform, you know, starting in 09, uh, 10, 11, and then by 12, things were ready. And Den Dennis Kucinich was being gerrymandered out of office, but we wanted to try to get him elected to keep the Need Act go. And then I had to use all my energy, and I worked with Karen Lewis really hard and pushed him really hard, and I said, this is time to go forward. And it's in your packet, you can see the CTU resolution, and I didn't write one word of it. They wrote it, they took it in, learned it, and went forward with it. So that was good stuff. He had to look on empirical evidence. So he was pushing them into high school level, at the AP level, and he wanted empirical evidence. Whereas when you work with younger kids, you want them to be able to dream and use their imaginations. You, the empiricism can come, though, too. Other questions? Wrap it up. Yeah, we need to wrap that up. So thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.